Welcome to today's episode of our little vintage show here at Bonedo. Um, today's topic is um, the magic of uh, 14 by 8 snare drums. 14 by 8 snare drums were actually quite popular in uh, the 80s. However, in the last, yeah, 10, 20 years or so, they, yeah, seem to be a bit forgotten. Actually, I don't know why, because personally, I love 14 by 8 snare drums. Um, they're very, very versatile. You can tune them low for, yeah, a very fat uh, backbeat snare drum sound. You can tune them, yeah, mid to high for a very solid crack and you can tune them way up for yeah even more crack if you want to so it actually they're very very versatile and yeah we're going to show you a couple of snare drums uh, from my personal collection in this video so yeah here we go Snare drum number one, um, that's a 14 by 8 WJE Steam Bend Cherry snare drum. A few words to the company. Uh, WJE is a very, very small company um, led by a guy called Stefan Vicky uh, from Switzerland. So um, this snare drum here is uh, totally handcrafted and steam band in Switzerland. Um, everything on that one is actually handmade. So yeah, it's quite, it's yeah, a work of art. Um, hoops, locks, the throw off, um, the dampening, dampening unit uh, in the inside. Everything is really made by hand. Uh, it's all made uh, out of uh, stainless steel, by the way. And yeah, I mean, it's pff, incredible snare drum. I mean, it's not that cheap, um, but it's really worth every, every cent that you, that you spend on it. It's equipped with an Aquarian texture coated um, on the top, an Aquarian Classic Clear uh, on the bottom, a 20 strand uh, snare wire, stainless steel snare wire, uh, by Vahan. Um, I should add that it has uh, rounded bearing edges on the top and a 45 degree bearing edges on the bottom. So yeah, it has a very very nice solid uh, fat cracky cracky sound. I love it. And um, yeah, another note, um, every snare in that video here uh, doesn't have any kind of dampening on it. So even though like this snare here, even if the snare has a dampening unit, uh, it's turned off for, yeah, the sake of authenticity uh, of the sound of the shell. Snare number two, 14 by 8, a noble and coolly solid maple snare drum in antique white, built in 1987. Uh, you may know that snare from our first episode of um, our vintage drum series. Um, however, I like it actually so much that I decided um, to show it here again. Um, it's definitely one of my uh, favorite snare drums um, and I use it really a lot. Um, I found it very, very versatile. I love the sound um, a lot. 
um, can tune it really um, deep for for that yeah for that I mentioned it before for that fat backbeat thing and you can tune it way up and then it's yeah <laughs> it gets let's say aggressive that's probably um, the best word to describe it however the funny thing is it never loses its, its death um, it still sounds really fat and um, very very amazing and um, it's equipped with an aquarium uh, texture coated power dot on the top an aquarium classic clear snare side on the bottom and it has the original uh, cam snare wire unit by Noble and Cooley on it. first episode there was a comment by someone um, because I said that the 14 by 8 Noble and Coolies are very very hard to get and um, the commentator mentioned that they it's not that difficult anymore because they started building them again yes that's correct they started building them again however try to find a vintage Noble and Coolie 14 by 8 and I predict it's going to take a very very long time till you find one because they were seldomly built back then especially maple tends to sound a lot sweeter after a couple of years um, so there's definitely a big difference in sound uh, when you buy a new one and an old one, of course. So, yeah, if you have the chance, then try to find an old one. But you need to be patient. But it's worth every minute and every cent that you spend on it. Pearl BLX 414ED. BLX means that this one is a bird shell compared to the others that were the first two that were steam bent. This is a yeah, regular uh, ply shell made out of birch. And one more special thing about it is that it has the parallel action strainer, the Pearl parallel action strainer. Um, it's a bit fiddly actually uh, because you need to dial in that first. Um, once you've dialed it in, however, um, it also stays dialed in. That's not often the case with uh, parallel uh, snare wire units. Um, yeah, construction-wise, however, it's one of the best uh, parallel strainers out there. And um, it's quite complex, actually, but um, I like it a lot. And it works, that's uh, the main thing. One disadvantage is that you can't get the original snare wires anymore. Uh, the original snare wires were, I think, uh, was a pair of uh, two strands each. However, they're deleted for, for a very, very long time. But what I did, I bought an original um, pearl free floating snare wire and uh, drilled a hole through uh, the plate uh, of the snare uh, wire unit and um, yeah that works flawlessly um, it's equipped with an aquarium texture coated regular texture coated on the top and an aquarium classic clear on the bottom sound wise um, it's very very concrete sounding snare drum 
and um, it doesn't have the beauty of um, the steam bent um, shells. Um, however, I really, really like it a lot. I would say it's a bit more rough sounding, maybe. Um, but yeah, I enjoy playing it a lot, actually. Um, Price-wise, um, they, yeah, a few years ago you got them for very, very cheap money. However, in the last couple of years, uh, prices actually went up to the roof. Um, the last time I saw one, they're quite rare nowadays. Um, the last time I saw one, I think was priced around 700 euros or so. Really beautiful snare drum, beautifully crafted, uh, well built and yeah. All made in Japan. Snare number four. Um, that's a, a mid-mill oak snare drum. Um, few words to the company. Mid-mill is a small custom shop company based in Germany. Biggest difference to the uh, ones before uh, is actually the fact the first two were steam band. The Pearl was a, yeah, as I said before, regular built ply uh, snare shell. That one here is a staff shell snare drum so sound wise it's a tad different compared to the others um, it's a tad more aggressive and yeah maybe a tad more uh let's say yeah percussive than the three before yeah it's a bit of a, a special sound however um i like sounds and i definitely do not want to miss it as it's still very very versatile um, it has a round over bearing edge on the top and a 45 degree uh, bearing edge on the bottom. So it's still a very, very fat sounding snare drum. To make it sound even fatter, I decided to equip it with an Aquarian Modern Vintage 2 on the top, an Aquarian Classic Clear snare side on the bottom, and a set of uh, hybrid snare wires, 42 strands, um, by Sabian. Um, yeah, it's a very, very nice sounding snare drum, and um, I definitely do not want to miss that. Okay, Mambo number five. No, uh, snare number five. Um, that's a 14 by 8 Tempest Bell Bros snare drum. And uh, as you can see and hear, I definitely need uh, my two arms and my two, two legs <laughs> to carry it around because that thing here definitely weighs a lot. Um, yeah, I mean, what shall I say about this drum? I mean, it's it's simply massive um, you can tune it really way down and you still get a very very nice singing tone out of the shell and you can tune it up uh, to get even more tone and crack and you can tune it way up and i promise it's going to melt every guitar player's face in the room uh, because it's getting really really very very aggressive um, yeah, I mean, it's incredible, incredible sounding snare drum. It's not that cheap, um, but definitely worth every cent, every euro that you spend on it. 
Um, it's equipped with an Aquarian texture coated on the top, texture coated power dot on the top, an Aquarian classic clear snare side on the bottom, and a uh, well, 20 strand uh, bell browser snare wire by Tama. Um, yeah, to get the full bell browser experience. words uh, to the shell and uh, to uh, browser in general. I know that um, bell browser snare drums are currently very very popular uh, in the drumming community and uh, there seem to be a lot of bell browser shells out there. However the biggest difference compared from those snares to that one here is that the shell is handcrafted and casted uh, in Germany. So that's probably uh, the highest quality uh, one can get at the market. So if you want a good and well casted and well built um, bell browser snare drum then really don't hesitate and get a Tempest. Snare number six, yeah, that's a 14 by 8 Ludwig uh, Coliseum snare drum uh, from the late 80s. Um, yeah, the biggest difference compared to the ones before is that this snare drum here has actually 12 uh, tension screws on each side. It can be a bit tricky to dial that drum in. Um, however, one big advantage of 12 uh, tension rods is actually the fact that you can really fine-tune it to your desired pitch. Once you've dialed that drum in, it sounds, in my opinion, phenomenal. It's a tad different sound-wise compared, um, again, to the others. Um, it has a very, very, yeah, Tom-like sound. Um, not that cutting. Uh, as you would expect from it, uh, even if you tune it up. Um, so it has that, yeah, like, yeah, bit more, yeah, Tom Tom sounding, like I mentioned it before. Uh, however, I really, really like it a lot. Um, that version comes with the P87 uh, throw off and the P87 wires, which actually can be a real pain in the ass, to be honest. Um, I did a modification uh, for using a um, regular uh, pearl free-floating snare wire on it without drilling any additional holes um, on the shell. Uh, however, I did not have the time yet to make it on that one, but the snare thing here works. But it's, yeah, it's a bit fiddly uh, to dial that, to dial that unit in. Yeah, price-wise, they are actually quite affordable and not that rare, actually. Um, you can get them for around 250 euros to, let's say, 500, maximum 600 euros on the used market. And you can also get them with the regular uh, P85 uh, throw-off. Some of those uh, drums are equipped with um, die-cast hoops. Um, that one here has the regular uh, 12 hole um, triple flange hoops on it. I also do have a set of original Ludwig um, die cast hoops. However, I prefer the more open sound of the um, triple flange hoops um, on that snare drum.
Um, it's uh, equipped with an Aquarian texture coated on um, the top and that's actually a Rima Ambassador uh, snare side um, on the bottom. Great snare drum for, yeah, let's say very, very affordable money. Okay, that's it for today's episode. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button below because we're definitely planning to do another couple of episodes uh, of our little vintage show here at Bonedo.de. So yeah, hope you enjoyed it and see you next time. Bye bye.